Good morning. Welcome to the live streaming of morning prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church, Tequesta, Florida, on this Tuesday, the 3rd of November, 2020, Election Day. My name is Ian Anderson, and I am a member of the Good Shepherd Daily Office team, the ministry that brings you morning and evening prayer. To download the service leaflet for this morning's service, go to goodshepvirtual.org, click on prayer and study, and look for today's date. Our service is live streamed over both Facebook and Zoom, so please join us on either platform this morning. This service will also be available beginning at 10 a.m. on Good Shepherd's YouTube channel. So if you have friends who would like to experience morning prayer at Good Shepherd, just have them go to youtube.com and search on Good Shepherd to Cuesta. Good morning, Pam and Bob. Good to see you here with us this morning. As I mentioned, today is indeed uh, election day. And I'd like to remind you, and I will remind you at the end of this broadcast as well, that at noon today, there will be prayers for the nation and for the election uh, hosted by Father Doug. So be sure to tune in uh, to, uh, to Facebook or YouTube at noon for those special prayers. And he actually commended us uh, who could not make it to that service that we tune in, uh, that we uh, have prayers that we will, that we say uh, for uh, the election and the nation. And I will, uh, I will say those prayers uh, on our behalf uh, later uh, in this uh, service. Um, today, we also uh, commemorate, uh, good morning, uh, Pete and, uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm trying to bring up, okay. And good morning, Joan May, good to see you. Um, <clears throat> Today also we commemorate Richard Hooker, who is very much a man for today, for us. Uh, Richard Hooker lived during a very fraught time uh, in uh, the, the development of the Christian religion and uh, in the world and in England in particular. Uh, and uh, so uh, he is the person uh, who coined the uh, the uh, term via media, which the middle way, which to this day, uh, we uh, hold up as a sort of the epitome of Anglicanism in our way of worship. He was, uh, uh, he was buffeted on each side, on the one side by, uh, by the Catholic church and Anglo-Catholics uh, who wished uh, to, uh, to take the uh, church in a more Catholic direction and by the Puritans on the other side. And he would have been as reviled in his own time as any moderate who would want to reach across the aisle and compromise to get things done would be reviled in today's political climate. <laughs> so he's very much a man after my own heart. Um, and uh, this is mentioned a little bit in the bishop's, uh, in the bishop's uh, message today. And I commend that message to, to you uh, that he, uh, he gives us a pattern that we might observe uh, to, uh, you know, during times of, of, of stress and tension in this country. So I commend that uh, to you. So the hour is now quickly upon us. So why don't uh, we uh, begin? Good morning, Terry. Good to see you. Um, so, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Our invitatory psalm this morning is Psalm 100, Jubilate Deo. We will say the Jubilate together in unison. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. The Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 61, and 62, we shall say the Psalms in unison. Hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. I call upon you from the ends of the earth with heaviness in my heart. Set me upon the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. I will dwell in your house forever. I will take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have granted me the heritage of those who fear your name. Add length of days to the king's life. Let his years extend over many generations. Let him sit enthroned before God forever. Bid love and faithfulness watch over him. So will I always sing the praise of your name and day by day I will fulfill my vows. For God alone my soul in silence waits. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assail to crush me, all of you together, as if you were a leaning fence, a toppling wall? They seek only to bring me down from my place of honor. Lies are their chief delight. They bless with their lips, but in their hearts they curse. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. 
Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> our Old Testament reading, or rather it's from the Apocrypha, our first reading, is again from Sirach. We're getting late in the day in Sirach. Uh, and you might rem remember that I listed 12, uh, 10 major themes that have been identified in Sirach. And today deals with the first that was listed, and that is about the creation. So a reading from the apocryphal book of Sirach. The pride of the higher realms is the clear vault of the sky, as glorious to behold as the sight of the heavens. The sun, when it appears, proclaims as it rises what a marvelous instrument it is, the work of the Most High. At noon it parches the land, and who can withstand its burning heat? A man tending a furnace works in a burning heat, but three times as hot is the sun scorching the mountains. It breathes out fiery vapors, and its bright rays blind the eyes. Great is the Lord who made it, at his orders, it hurries on its course. It is the moon that marks the changing seasons, governing the times, their everlasting sign. From the moon comes the sign for festal days, a light that wanes when it completes its course. The new moon, as its name suggests, renews itself. How marvelous it is in this change a beacon to the hosts on high, shining in the vault of the heavens. The glory of the stars is the beauty of heaven, a glittering array in the heights of the Lord. On the orders of the Holy One, they stand in their appointed places. They never relax in their watches. Look at the rainbow and praise him who made it. It is exceedingly beautiful in its brightness. It encircles the sky with its glorious arc. The hands of the Most High have stretched it out. By his command, he sends the driving snow and speeds the lightnings of his judgment. Therefore, the storehouses are opened and the clouds fly out like birds. In his majesty, he gives the clouds their strength and the hailstones are broken in pieces. The voice of his thunder rebukes the earth. When he appears, the mountains shake. At his will, the south wind blows. So do the wind, the storm from the north, and the whirlwind. He scatters the snow like birds flying down, and its descent is like locusts alighting. The eye is dazzled by the beauty of its whiteness, and the mind is amazed at it as it falls. He pours frost over the earth like salt, and icicles form like pointed thorns. The cold north wind blows, and ice freezes on the water. It settles on every pool of water, and the water puts it on like a breastplate. He consumes the mountains and burns up the wilderness and withers the tender grass like fire. A mist quickly heals all things. The falling dew gives refreshment from the heat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. After that reading, it would have been appropriate to have read Canticle 10 in our prayer book, The Song of Creation. But nevertheless, the one appointed for this morning is the second song of Isaiah, Querite Dominum, which we shall say in unison. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. 
call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts and let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion and to our God for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor your ways my ways says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading this morning continues from the Gospel according to Luke. Uh, in it, uh, Jesus admonishes his followers uh, about their own uh, responsibility to repent of their own evil and not to fixate on the evils of others. Hmm, sounds fitting for this election day. And he also tells the parable of the fig tree that is not producing fruit. So a reading from the gospel according to Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Are those 18 who were killed when the tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told them a parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his garden and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament canticle this morning is the Te Deum Laudamus, You Are God, which we shall say in unison. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. 
you overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The Collect of the Day is the Collect for Proper 26. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Collect in commemoration of Richard Hooker, priest and theologian. O God of truth and peace, who raised up your servant, Richard Hooker, in a day of bitter controversy, to defend with sound reasoning and great charity the Catholic and reformed religion. Grant that we may maintain that middle way, not as a compromise for the sake of peace, but as a comprehension for the sake of truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all that we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And truly a prayer for today, a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon where there is discord, union, where there is doubt, faith. 
Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world and in every denomination, and particularly those of the Via Media, the Anglican Communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Rockhampton, Australia, the Right Reverend Peter Grice, Bishop Elect, the Diocese of Delhi, North India, the Right Reverend Weris K. Massa, Bishop, and the Diocese of Kutigi, Nigeria, the Right Reverend Jeremiah Kolo, Bishop. We pray also for our own Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton and his wife, Kate. And for our companion diocese, remembering today especially the Diocese of the Dominican Republic, the Right Reverend Mohises Quezada Mota, Bishop. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray also for our own parish family and those dear to them. Remembering today especially Nancy, Martin, Stan and Shirley, Mark, Ray, Susie and David, Cindy, Joe and Connie, Ruth, Joseph, Natalie, Jim, Kathy, Dale, Richard and Margaret, Sue, Richard, Patty, George, Joan May, Susan, Kevin, Drew, and Jean. Almighty and everlasting God, make our parish of Good Shepherd truly a community of prayer and belonging. Raise up in our midst the resources and leadership which will enable us to act upon what you would have us do in this place and in a ministry of love and concern for others. Open my mind and heart to discern what you would have me do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers of petition, intercession, and thanksgiving, either shared with all or held in the silence of your hearts. Good morning, Kathy. Good to have you with us this morning. And good morning, Carrie. Karen, I'm sorry. And good morning, Julie and Pete. Great to see you too. So Joan May asks prayers for healing for her longtime friend, Lynn, who is hospitalized with upper GI bleeding. So let us pray for Lynn. O oh God, the strength of the weak and the comfort of sufferers, mercifully accept our prayers and grant to your servant Lynn the help of your power that her sickness may be turned into health and our sorrow into joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Pam and Bob ask prayers for their friend Lindy, who has a tumor behind his eye. 
So let us pray for a person in trouble or bereavement. O merciful Father, you have taught us in your holy word that you do not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. Look with pity upon the sorrows of your servant for whom our prayers are offered. Remember him, O Lord, in mercy. Nourish him with patience. Comfort him with a sense of your goodness. Lift up your countenance upon him and give him peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> so let us say the prayers that Father Doug commended to us today to pray as our nation goes to the polls. For this is, this is a prayer for the nation. Lord God Almighty, you have made of all the peoples of the earth for your glory to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A prayer for every human heart. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease. That our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for the election. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation may be enabled to fulfill your purposes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us continue with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning for morning prayer. If you are venturing out to vote today, uh, I, I wish you safety and, uh, and not too long a line in doing that. Uh, 
Please pray for all who are going to vote today. I personally would be praying for this day that uh, everyone who wishes to cast a vote in this election has the opportunity to do so, that every ballot is counted, and then once the ballots are tallied and the results are known, that the entire country, though divided, will accept and come together behind the result, no matter what it is. Um, we don't know what God's will is for us, uh, but as the bishop said, uh, we can uh, center ourselves, take an internal selfie to discern our own thoughts, then to engage and to go out and do what God has given us to do today. So be sure to tune back in at noon when Father Doug will be leading prayers for the nation and for the election. And of course, we will see you again here tomorrow. So as you venture out today, be sure to be kind to your neighbor. Amen. <laughs>